Britain and France declared war on Germany after the invasion of Poland, and the first raids began. Armstrong Whitworth Whitley, the dependable fourth group of the Royal Air Force, was the only trained night bomber force in the world. The Whitley was the first Royal Air Force bomber command to strike inside an enemy country, hitting multiple German cities on the opening night of the war. However, it wasn't explosives that descended upon the German population when the squadron detonated their bomb load nearing its target. In 1934, the British military prepared for war by requesting the development of a heavy night bomber and troop transport as part of the Royal Air Force's concept. The British Empire wanted aircraft capable of fighting in remote locations, carrying troops and providing aerial support. Armstrong Whitworth's chief designer, John Lloyd, submitted the AW-38 design, a variation of the AW-23 bomber transport that had been defeated by the Bristol bomber. The first batch of 80 models was delivered in mid-1935, but the prototype's first flight took place in March 1936. Although the final result did not win many hearts, it was said to carry on a legacy of ugly but dependable heavy bombers that performed well in the early stages of the war. The Whitley design was a simple cantilever monoplane with retractable undercarriage for a twin-engine aircraft. Despite being classified as a heavy bomber, the AW-38 Whitley became the first RAF aircraft with a semi-monocoque fuselage, inspired by the AW-23. The principal designer was inexperienced with flaps on big, heavy monoplanes, so early models lacked them. To compensate, mid-set wings were adjusted to a high angle of incidence of 8.5 degrees. This alteration improved takeoff and landing performance. The wing remained unchanged, and at cruise speed the Whitley had a noticeable nose-down attitude, resulting in significant drag. The nose portion and cockpit were tilted downward to highlight this feature. Operational models were released in two marks, with minor variations between the first order of 34 Mark I and 46 Mark II. The power plant was modified and standardized across all marks after the first 34 aircraft were assembled. Whitley's were equipped with various engines before the introduction of the Rolls-Royce Merlin engine in 1938, resulting in a notable boost in performance. The Whitley was the first of three British frontline medium bombers used by the RAF delivered to the 58th and 51st squadrons in 1938. The type was assigned to the No. 10 squadron in 1937. Around 200 machines, including the Mark III and Mark IV, were in service during the war. The Whitley was considered the most significant design in the Armstrong Whitworth archive. The Mark I remained in use until European aggression began. Later, the Mark III and Mark IV emerged, with the Mark IV having different radial power plants and the Mark III featuring a retractable ventral cannon. The AW-38 typically had a crew of five, with four additional machine guns installed in a motorized turret assembly at the tail. The bomber could carry up to 7,000 pounds of bombs, but its initial payload was a more subdued and psychologically oriented payload. The Whitley was the first twin-engine bomber designed for night operations, making it the first fleet to fly over Germany in September 1939. On the first night of the war, operational Whitley squadrons were dispatched on nickel missions over the Ruhr Valley, dropping thousands of propaganda pamphlets to persuade the populace that they were on the wrong side of the fight.
Upon Italy's joining the Axis, Whitley bomber launched raids on its territory and participated in the war's first parachute operation in southern Italy in 1941. On February 10, airborne troops were dropped by Whitley bombers as part of Operation Colossus, aiming to destroy an aqueduct providing fresh water to several Italian military units. Despite equipment malfunctions and navigational problems, the group successfully demolished the aqueduct and raised spirits among the nascent airborne organization. The flight crews gained experience in operating and navigating in the dark during the initial night sorties, and the squadrons were actively engaged in various activities, such as bombings, mine laying, and submarine patrols. The type played a crucial role in bomber command operations until 1942, when four-engined aircraft were introduced. The Mark V and Mark VII were significant versions of the AW-38 aircraft, designed for counter-submarine warfare and maritime reconnaissance. They had an extra crew member and an ASV radar with increased fuel capacity. The aircraft's total weight increased from 21,680 pounds to 33,950 pounds, and its operating range expanded to 3,700 kilometers. The Mark V marked the start of high-level deep strike missions into occupied regions throughout Europe. The AW-38 also aided resistance organizations' covert operations in occupied nations. The Whitley was primarily used for night bombing operations over Germany in the first half of the war and served as a glider tug during the Battle of Normandy and the D-Day landings. Eventually, the Whitley was introduced alongside heavies like the Avro Lancaster. 269 aircraft were lost in combat during the conflict. The Whitley AW-38 was a reliable and well-liked aircraft during World War II. It was replaced by the following generation of British and American bombers, which had improved long-range, heavy attack capability and superior defense. The aircraft withdrew from active duty in 1942, but production continued until 1943. Many operational examples were transformed into training aircraft, and during the 1000 bomber attack on Cologne in May, a few were brought back into service. In total, 1,815 AW-38 was constructed in all six varieties, with Mark V being the most well-known with about 1,500 units made. Decommissioned in 1945, the Whitley provided the Royal Air Force with an offensive aircraft that was desperately needed.